Hi, this is Bob Brown, and welcome to my YouTube channel. There's a lot of news, uh, you know, from USA Today. <clears throat> uh, uh, the t ch title here is Department Stores Become Endangered, and they have some of the major sh uh, brands of the 20th century, uh, Macy's, Sears, Kmart, all three of my favorite, and I am worried about these stores. This is a great article to read from USA Today, dated uh, the 6th of 2017, January 1st, uh, Epiphany in the Christian calendar. Uh, take a look at that real quick. And the number one thing I think that, that will save these stores, you can see the map there of the store closures, is it's the consumer. The consumer has to decide, do we want to have a world with no department stores or do we want to have a world that has department stores? Because it's pretty vital, in my opinion, for local economies and for local consumer goods. Sorry, the cats decided to uh, become a cameraman. Uh, that we have these stores. <clears throat> so that's one article. We want to explore that. I want to explore. I'm particularly interested in Kmart. Uh, Kmart's, I've been going to Kmart since I was a child, uh, the old Krusky company, and I'm really hoping that Kmart will survive. And as a, as a c customer of Kmart, I want to help provide that. <clears throat> the big article, the big discussion I want to have for this is the continuing series on Trump versus the oligarchs. <clears throat> Today we saw that Donald Trump tweeted to Toyota Motor Company who was planning on building a factory in Baja, California, that's the lower peninsula of California in Mexico. They were going to build a plant there to sell Toyota Corollas back in the United States and Trump said no way. Now this is becoming the showdown I've been talking about through several videos on this channel about Trump versus the oligarchs. My hypothesis is that NAFTA under really under the first George Bush administration and under Bill Clinton, and subsequently created what I call the Clintonian oligopoly uh, uh, syndrome, uh, for lack of a better term. And what happened under the NAFTA agreement was that there became a point where businesses <clears throat> were moved out of the United States for a variety of reasons to Mexico, and many of them were also sent to China, which has nothing to do with NAFTA. But I'll talk a little bit more about that in another video on what would have happened if the TPP had been signed, because I think there was a hidden clause in there that I want to talk about at great length that would have been very damaging to the American economy and the American worker. But Donald Trump, <clears throat> the real target for Donald Trump's ire, the real target for Trump's wall between Mexico and the United States, I contend is not the Mexican people. It is not the Mexican people. What Donald Trump is trying to do, and I'm trying to read his mind like you are, is that he is putting up this wall so he can control the Clinton oligopolies and the Clintonian oligarchs that came into existence with the formation of NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. If you are a worker in a manufacturing field during this period, and I was one of them, I'm, you, you can ask anybody in this field, and I've been asking people, I haven't done a scientific survey, but I want to. If you ask people who, who existed in this era, what was your life like? I think one word would come up, fear. People lived in fear of losing their jobs all the time. Because if a union or, or just a normal business, if you weren't willing to concede wages, if you didn't take pay cuts, you could suddenly, the owner of that company could say, you know what, I'm moving this thing to Mexico. It's right across the border, it's no big deal. I'll move it to Mexico and I'll just sell back in the United States. Instead of paying you $15 an hour, I'll pay the Mexican people $5 an hour. So what, Clinton, what Trump is really doing is gonna really ultimately help Mexico and the Mexican people. Not initially, I grant you. And initially there's gonna be a lot of pain as this tears back apart. But eventually it's gonna say that the Mexican people cannot be exploited by American companies moving companies in there and forcing down their wages. In other words, the Mexican people have like a, kind of like a glut of work that they can do. And there's so much they can do that you know they really can't get their wages up. Once the border is established, Mexico is going to have to have a choice of, of allowing its agriculture and its free market to really bloom, not depend on the Clinton oligopoly system where we'll say, well, we'll play the American worker off against the Mexican worker. And that's what's happening. So I, I want people to realize, do not have an anti-Mexico stance or an anti-Mexican stance. Understand, I believe that Trump, what's happening is you're seeing, and this is my hypothesis, you're seeing the breakup of the Clintonian oligopolies and the Clintonian oligarchs. The oligarchs are basically people running these businesses, these 
30 to 50 million dollar cap businesses, 120 million up to a billion dollars, up to the size of Toyota. It's all series of businesses. They had the power under NAFTA to move businesses back and forth anywhere they want. Sounds great unless you're the worker. Sounds great unless you're a community that's been devastated because of business pulled out. And now they can exploit the Mexican workers, exploit the Mexican environment, and sell it back into America. <clears throat> this is not working. This is impoverishing the Mexican worker, and it's impoverishing the American worker. You can only just look around at many communities. You can look at Youngstown, Ohio, for example, that's been totally devastated. Uh, uh, Eastern Pennsylvania has been completely economically devastated. Parts of Wisconsin and Minnesota, all the places that Trump won, Ohio, Indiana, all these states have been devastated by NAFTA, and that was the turning point. So my contention is that the NAFTA oligopolies under Clinton, which, which I call the Clintonian oligopolies, the Clint, and the Clintonian oligarchs, these are people brought up in business, this is what they learned. They learned outsourcing, they learned that NAFTA empowered them to de-empower the worker, although there was incentives to keep them because, you know, you wanted to seem like a good guy. Deep down, there was a pall of fear over these businesses. Now, I'm not saying that all businesses weren't enlightened in this time period from the signing of NAFTA by Bill Clinton up until the present date of 2017. There were a lot of enlightened businesses, and there are. But there were some that weren't so enlightened. And a lot of these businesses moved out. And it did not prove to be beneficial to these companies. A lot of them didn't know how to do business in Mexico. A lot of them did not know how to do business in, in China. So, again, the, keep an eye on this as this roll out. This is going to be fascinating. I, I can't wait to see what Toyota's response is to Donald Trump. Ford has already kind of m made a move, or at least a token move, to build, business, build a factory in Michigan that they were going to build in Mexico. GM is kind of on the fence. They don't know where they're going. Toyota just got put on notice and their stock went down. This is going to be the most interesting time for business and politics in American history. I think we're watching it unfold right before our eyes. And believe me, I'm no fan of NAFTA. I, I have been a victim of NAFTA and I'm hoping that Trump will move it away. And it's my contention that initially there's going to be some birthing pains that are going to be very painful. But in the long run, the Mexican people are going to benefit and the American worker is going to benefit. And we're going to get back to real free trade, not oligopolies that can move businesses on a chessboard back and forth and really can get government funding and government assistance. And it's not really capitalism. It's more of a kind of a government-controlled, uh, you know, monopoly, you know, oligopoly. You know, as long as you play ball with each government and you can pit each government against each other, like... Well, how many incentives are you going to give me, Mexico, if I move my business there? Well, we'll give you all this. Well, how much are you going to give me if I choose to stay in America? Well, we'll give you this. Once the wall's up and once the tariff's up, you're, you're, if you're trying to sell into the American market, you're going to have to build in the American market. You're going to have to manufacture in the American market. That's exactly what Trump wants. And a strong America is, best, is the greatest thing for the world. If anyone wants to argue me on that point, progressive, you know, or, or conservative, I'll be happy to argue with you on this point. But a strong, economically powerful America is the best stability for this world. So anyway, that's my quick update. Uh, read the USA T Today uh, article. Consider supporting Macy's, Kmart, and Sears. They need your help. We need those businesses. They're vital to our local economies to have these uh, department stores. I don't think an America without department stores is a good thing. I think people are going to want to go look and see things. Um, there was a great PBS series on this very thing, like on the formation of the department stores. We don't really want to go back to where we just sit in a chair and just do that. I mean, Amazon's a great company, don't get me wrong. But I think Macy's is a great company. I think Kmart can be a great company again. I think Sears can be a great company again. Um, I really think Kmart and Sears should split or they should fold it all into the Kmart brand, which would be very painful to lose the Sears name. One last point, Sears selling off the Craftsman brand, bad mistake. That's a number one draw for that company. Once they lose the Craftsman brand, I don't really know what Sears is anymore. I mean, they may have their appliances, their Kenmore line, but I think they've licensed that. So I would tell the Sears, uh, I would tell the Sears executives, it may be a done deal and it probably is, it was a bad mistake. You should have kept your craftsman line because that was a number one draw for you. You always kept people coming back. I'm sorry to see it go.
This is Bob Brown, and as always, keep studying.